Hello, welcome back to the box. So, uh, I'm doing these classes very straight, no fancy editing or anything like that, because uh, I need to upload them as fast as possible. Uh, so for those of you who are in uh, semester three and four, you're always welcome. Um, I would encourage you to also view the stuff that is uh, for semester one and two, because it actually, I may touch on certain points that actually help what you're doing. Okay, in this particular one, uh, we're going to do two things. Uh, the main thing is uh, equalization as applied to effects such as reverb and delay. However, I'm also going to show you another application of a sidechain as, uh, that is practical, such as that I will be using for the classes, since we're going to do a few of them online from now on. Okay, this is a demo. This is just a, a demo of some track, and it's got like some congas here. We've got... Um, I think these are drums, sorry, I didn't actually name this. We've got drums there, an acoustic guitar riff that is cycling round and round. We've got like a synth, a lead vocal, uh, three backing vocals, and uh, snaps, just like finger snaps. And uh, this is my voice. Now, so this is not part of the, um, of the music. And so it's just like a cycle of music going round and round and of, on which I was just throwing some ideas and stuff like that. Okay, calling up the mixer pressing X and I haven't put like any EQ on anything there's no compression anywhere uh, we just got here utility stuff basically just a few gains here cut off like um, 9 dB this one cut off 5 we cut off uh, 15 and here we cut why did, I, why did I throw it this way cut off uh, 26 and all this is is just uh, is just to make sure that I, I keep my gain structure controlled it leaves me some room on the faders because if because some of these samples or when you use software instruments sometimes they just have this uh, very very loud stuff in there so you can throw this on to help them out of course an, a software instrument like this also has a volume knob i could have just gone in here and cut it but i just i already had a gain thing i just threw it on like that and it doesn't chew up a lot of juice on the processor all right now fast things fast i can't have the music running all the way as it is while speaking you see like you can hear me but i have to kind of raise my voice just to compete it's like it's tough so uh for uh, for me to be able to control that first of all i need to group all these channels as you see here with the output they're all going to the stereo output there so i'm gonna choose all the music from that channel i have to the snaps press shift and click the other one then i go to the output raw and i can choose any track then i'll select bass output i'm gonna choose bass 10. when i used to i don't use logic now but when i used to uh, i used to reserve like one to ten for my basically effects uh, like effect sense and then i'll start groups of instruments from bass 11 but you can do whatever you want i've grouped it here and i'm just going to call this music and basically this is all the stuff so now when we play the music It's all coming to this. I'm able to mute it there. So, um, and that already gives me a certain amount of control that I didn't have before. Just mute all the music, but without disturbing my voice here. However, what I really want is actually my voice to be able to control this music and turn it down. So that means I will apply a compressor here and just use it as a, a volume control like a darking of the volume so that whenever my voice comes in it can push it down and my voice will be the trigger via the side chain here up here so if i click there on the top right then uh, i look for my voice which is if you go on audio it will be the teaching here however what would be better is actually to go for the input like input one because now uh, if we go on to the teaching channel here if i go here you see the line of the input the microphone is actually plugged into input one so i want as my voice is coming in right in at the beginning that it can control the compressor so the compressor reacts immediately from my voice so here and this is what we would do then i want this to just be able to turn the music down so as i play <laughs> So I'm not really going for real compression. I just want, I'm going to use the makeup gain as a thing to kind of like take things down. 
to that level. Yeah, but right now my voice is not triggering it because the uh, threshold is too high. Um, so I need to take the threshold down until it kind of gets to a point, as you can see now, where my voice comes in and actually triggers it. What I don't want is even when I tap the desk or I'm clicking the, the mouse, yeah, then it starts to trigger things. So I want to set it to be sensitive enough to my voice, but not too sensitive that is picking up every little thing in the room and then starting to trigger this compressor. So I'll set around there, maybe. That, yeah, that looks kind of good. And then I'll try to make sure the attack is early as, as possible because I want the voice to, uh, to you, for you to hear every single word as immediately as possible. So I want it to come in and activate immediately. But I also want it to take time before it goes out. So the release is late. Uh, so that it's not like as soon as I stop talking, the music just like wafts up really fast. Then that also kind of defeats the purpose of like clarity because I'm trying to have clarity between you hearing me and also hearing the music. Yeah, so now if I play, I can talk over the music like this. And every time I do, the music goes down just a bit enough to hear. Maybe I can do it a little bit more. Something like this. And the other thing I'm going to do, so you saw my voice, um, like right now, even though you can hear it, it's not uh, at the best level possible. Um, so on the track that is housing my, uh, my voice, I'm going to, first of all, add an EQ. Actually, I didn't have to add it like that. I could have just done... I could have just clicked here and it will still come up. So we get this. It's quite small. I, I did this on purpose to take it down to 50% because when it's larger, like either 75 or 100, um, it not only takes up a lot of space on the screen, but because I'm um, recording my screen, uh, the computer is working hard, not just on the audio, but to make sure that it gives it, it captures the graphics and some of these plugins such as this um, actually are, are, are very uh, graphic heavy uh, so sometimes the when you're trying to capture um, it can compromise the video that you're trying to capture or compromise the audio depending on the strength of your computer if your computer processor is very fast and you have a lot of ram and everything and everything is juiced up then you don't have to worry about these things however if it isn't, and this particular one I'm working on isn't, then I kind of prefer to take it down, you know, maybe 75 for clarity, because if I make it any smaller, you might not be able to see anything. So I'm going to cut out the laws out of uh, my microphone uh, to around uh, around 80, and I'll cut there, and I'll leave the, the highs uh, coming through for clarity. Bam, that's that. Now... I'll add also a compressor here, just so that any of the quieter bits that I, I do speak uh, come on level, and then the, the bits that are too loud, like if I make some weird noise or something, it will be curtailed and won't uh, make noise for you. I'm just gonna... Um, I'll go for a rap vocal, even though this is not rap, but uh, what the idea here is to make sure that all my louder bits can be contained and then the ones that are quieter can come through just like you know basic compression i'm not really gonna do anything here maybe what i can do is like lower the threshold a little bit but not but not too much because now when i went over there you could hear maybe a bike from the street outside so i need to make sure that you know it's within reasonable limits and a ratio make it about around eight it doesn't mean that whenever you grab something that a, a preset that you just use it the way it is it's, it, it's a starting point uh, you have to base your compression on the exact sound that you're trying to compress now that's done now if i play again and then speak the voice is very clear the music is not going down you're still able to it's not going down completely you're still able to hear it Oh, and know, hear know, me clearly as well. Heart. Yeah, I that done. Know. Bish bosh. Enough of that. So we're moving on to uh, EQing of delay. 
and uh, reverb. But we'll start with, with uh, reverb. So I'm gonna apply some reverb on the lead vocal, this one here. Yeah. But before I do that, I want to make something clear. This is something we did in semester one and stuff. The thing of making things organized so that you can see things clearly. Just like you see now, I can easily see where music is, where the stereo out is, yeah? I can see where the drums are, but now this is not clear what is what. So I need to kind of differentiate this. So press X, go back to this place, to the arrange window, and try to make sure that I give these things some color um, some definition so I know what it is even though the names are clear you know at least I did good on that the colors would actually also help a bit you don't have to do this but I'm doing it just to make things a little bit clearer a little bit faster because if you're working with other people you want your project to be able to uh, communicate very quickly they know what you're talking about they know what the the files mean what tracks uh, are what they can easily find the things within your project because these days uh, collaboration is quite a big thing in production so it's good to actually have things uh, very clear for others to also work on the same content so i right click here and go down look for assign track color and there i can be able to uh, assign a color I'll go like that, and if I go to X, now my vocal track is very easy to see. Uh, perhaps I can't read what is on there, so I'll choose this color. And then for these ones, brown, yeah. So we've got our backing vocals clear, our lead vocal is clear, and now it's very easy to see where my vocal is, not just having to read stuff. You see, even some names are too long with a synth or whatever. Like if the color is there and you already identify the color, it makes it easier. So I go in here and I go to the sense. I'm applying reverb, bus one. And once I do that, you see here it has created an aux. So basically bus one, if you click here, is being sent to aux two. This aux two is the one that is going to house our reverb. Of course, I have to apply the effect. Let's see here. So I'm gonna get a preset because I created some uh, a preset somewhere else. This one that I called Kansanga Corridor. This one I created, uh, you might find it in another video. Another uh, video I did for you about designing your own reverbs. So uh, check up Reverb Basics 2 or 1 or something. So here, there's a reverb I already created, but since it's being done on a, on a send, so it's, it's going to be a parallel reverb, then uh, I need all the wet sound here, so I need that to be 100%. And I can play and add some reverb. I'll use just this check section. I just want it to be repeating round and round. I want to know, want to know, want to know your heart. I want to know you. Let me in. Yeah, so you can, I put quite a generous amount there, just so that we get, could get to hear it. However, uh, before I can deal even with the... Uh, with the amounts here, it's kind of difficult to, to work your sends with this little niggly thing here. What would be better is to use this sends on faders up here. So when you click it, you'll see it provides you like bass one reverb. Like I can choose that. Once that is chosen, all the faders here change and now they are only applicable to things that are sending something. Uh, in this case, sending something to the reverb. For example, if I provide a send here, you see, to reverb, bam, and the new fader comes up down here. Anyway, for now, let's first get this one off. No send. Boom, it's gone. What we are doing is being able to control our send from here, as opposed with this very tiny thing that you can't control very well. Okay, so this is much easier. Ridiculous, and just push it like, bam. I'm gonna be ridiculous and push it like that. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know. Yeah, and then control the volume of the reverb from here. Like that. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. Let me in. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know what's inside. I want to know you. Now, uh, 
uh, it's not a very good reverb for this, but it, it will be very shortly. Now, the issue here is like, why did I do this whereby I decrease the volume this side of the actual reverb and then raise this? It's because if I'm trying to control the levels of the reverb from here, the fader increments, every tiny increment has a big impact on how much change is happening at the reverb. But when you're at a higher range, like around this area, the meter is different. You send, but every movement doesn't have such a big impact as it does uh, on the lower side of the fader. And this is uh, something that can easily affect your gain structure and your ability to be able to control a fader if you leave your faders so low. And it applies to normal faders if I take this off and go back to normal ones. It applies to these, which are for the main mix, as well as uh, these ones, which are for the sense. When it's around here, it's, you start to have a little bit more control. If you see the meters, from here to here is a, a difference of 10 dB, 50 to 60. But then the same distance here is 40 to 45. So you're getting more control as you get higher. And then the same distance here it's 21 to 24. You get more control. So the higher the fader is, the more leverage or control you have uh, of movement. So you can have larger movements at the higher end than this side. So if you can have larger movements, that means you can have subtle control. But you can't have subtlety here because a tiny movement down here actually has a big impact. I want to know, want to know, want to know your heart. I want to know you. So we've got some uh, weird fake reverb there. But if I go to the reverb now, um, you'll see down here that he has a low cut and a high cut. So basically that's a, a filter. It filters out frequencies. It will cut out any lows below whatever frequency you've selected here and then cut out any high frequencies above the frequency that you've set here. And basically it will give you a bell. What this means is that if I added uh, an EQ here on the reverb channel and did this low cut and I put like around 400 say, and then I went on the high and cut out the highs and put for example 45, then this is exactly what this is doing. Uh, it might do it differently, it depends on how the, the, the programmers of that particular plugin how they configured their uh, their bell because uh, we can't count for the curve like how steep that curve is depends how they did that so in this case probably i would want the curve to be a little bit smoother so not so steep you know something like that and i'll probably want to lift the middle a bit so you end up with this kind of vibe this is effectively or roughly what is going on here I can actually apply my EQ to the reverb to improve it by cutting out the high frequencies and low frequencies. And the reason for doing this is because a lot of the low frequencies can introduce clutter, basically a booming sound in your mix, because it's like you already maybe have those frequencies in the sound that you've sent to the reverb, say if it's the voice, as, as we have here. And then you send it to the to the reverb, and then the reverb accentuates those frequencies again, and basically introduces more lack of clarity. And then on the side of the highs, like if you over accentuate like those particular frequencies which you already have in the actual original signal, but you over accentuating them on the extremities of the of the highs, you you end up getting some extra sibilance that again could be quite unpleasant, basically introducing a certain harshness. Uh, within the mix and the river being over present we try to cut out the frequencies on the extremities on some of these effects not always you don't always want to do it but many times you do because it improves the clarity of the mix not having things that are taking up space in your mix when they're actually not necessary to do because you're replicating something that is already present in the original signal so what I've done is what is here, but I'm doing it with more precision than would be here. So what I will do is I cut this one back a bit so that it's not extreme as this, and then let this one do the real work because it's a, a more precise EQ, if you like. So I can do more things with this so that I can shape the texture of my reverb. I want to know, want to know, want to know your heart. I want to know you. Let me in. 
already is cleaner than what it was. This is a, a very useful technique to try and EQ your actual effect coming in. I can do all sorts of things to that. Of course, I can EQ it in all kinds of ways, depending on what my creativity tells me to do or what technical aspect I want to achieve within a particular song. Or if it's a problem I'm trying to solve their frequencies which are getting over accentuated, then I'll go to the reverb and pull them out if those frequencies are, are coming because of the reverb or whatever effect. You don't only do this to reverb, but right now we're dealing with reverb, okay? Um, so let's see when we apply the same effect to uh, the backing vocals. So I've got backing vocals here, and rather than go doing like sends on one, two, three, blah, 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 it's a good thing, but uh, sometimes it's just clutter because I'm repeating the process over and over, yet this is, these are supposed to be maybe a group of people singing in the same environment. Why don't I apply the effect to them all together? It would be wise to group them. So right now, they're already going together with the music to bus 11 and therefore with the music group, this channel here. But we want to give them their own, so I select that and press shift and select that. And now I can give them their own group. So, and I'm gonna say bus 12. It gives me a new aux here, which now I'm going to name BVs. If now we look at bus 12, see, it's going to BVs. So we've got this new group. I want to send something to the reverb, but I don't want to send it with all its clutter. Like if there are frequencies in there on each of these voices that I don't like, or certain frequencies within what I recorded that I don't like, it might be a good idea to first do equalization on each of these tracks. But equally, it would be a good idea, since all these vocals have been collated together into this, I can just go and apply what I want to apply on them. And in this case, I can cut out certain frequencies. So I'm doing it all at once, because if it's like a generic, uh, simple thing, I'm just trying to cut out some low frequencies out of this thing. And possibly cut out some highs, because I want these backing vocals to get out of the way of the lead vocal. But I don't want to cut it like so harshly like this. It needs to be more like a shoulder type. So right here, what I would do is to make sure that the slope is not so steep. So you don't do this vibe here, but you do this kind of vibe. So that is like a smoother slope, yeah, kind of thing. So let's have a listen to how these sound by themselves, perhaps. I want to know, want to know, want to know your heart. I want to know you. So if I go back, I'm hearing one of the voices too much. So I'll turn, turn that down a bit and play that again. I want to know, want to know, want to know your heart. I want to know you. I can still cut off more of these low frequencies, so I'm gonna push that in a bit more to like 100 something, like there. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. Yeah, by the way, I should mute the lead vocal for now. And then this very same thing, now I want to send to this same uh, reverb that I so I've listened to that, and as we uh, send an effect uh, as we send the effect there. So I have to switch this on, this changes, and then we have now a fader that is for sending to the reverb. And as you can see, the bus level is changing. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know what's inside. I want to know you. Yeah, I'm overcooking the reverb there, but you get the idea. Bring back the lead so I can temper it against uh, the BVs. And I don't want to have too much reverb on the lead so that it can be a little bit more forward. And then the, the, the backing vocals will uh, sit back. And what is pushing them backwards is because the high frequencies were cut a bit. Some of the articulation is not as sharp, you know, and uh, as cutting. So it, f it gives the, the, the illusion of distance. And then similarly, if the reverb is a little bit more than the lead vocal, then again, it will add to the illusion of distance. So the lead vocal will sound forward and the backing vocals will sound a little bit back in the mix. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. Let me in. 
And then the other thing is that those vocals themselves also need to be turned down. So I go back to these faders, then down. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. Let me in. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know what's inside. I want to know you. Let me in. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. Yeah, I can actually add even more reverb. I know it sounds ridiculous, but yeah. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. Yeah, something like that. It's not like you know the best thing, but you get the idea. Um, we have to crack on. Um, then. If now I wanted to do uh, some uh, something with a delay again, where the same thing can be uh, applied, so I go to the lead vocal, apply a delay, going on bus two. Once I did it, it brings up this new aux here, and I'm going to call it delay. And so we have our delay aux here, and we can go into it and add a delay. I'm going to go for a stereo delay. This comes up. And the first thing, uh, of course, you notice uh, the top parts where we can change our delay timings and so on. But immediately below below that, we've got again that filter that we talked about. There's a low cut that filters out uh, any frequency below the number that is present here, and a high cut that filters out any frequency that is above this number. Of course, uh, this is the top. That is the bottom. The, the, it, right now they're at the extremes nothing is cut out nothing is filtered out but uh, if, as soon as I move it then I'm filtering out um, 110 and below of course there will be some kind of curve of how that is done but right here you don't have any settings for how that curve is same thing the other side and so that will filter out all the frequencies above the number that you set here and if I go and choose like a preset it will come with some of these things already set up so if i go for a quarter note triplet thing you see right here now this one the preset has a low cut so all frequencies below 90 are gone all frequencies below 47 hertz are gone well not all of course there will be a curve and to reiterate what we talked about again with the reverb like if i went on here and added an eq then I could recreate the same thing for myself. I could go, go cut, and then I put in, uh, in this case, 90. I get like 90 hertz. And then I go the other side, and I can type in 47 kilohertz, or 4,700 hertz, which is the same thing. So this is roughly what they've done here in the with the delay plugin. This side, uh, again, I have a feeling that they, there will be a bell of some sort as part of that so it's not always just like some it's a flat thing but you can have a flat thing you have can the whole point i'm trying to make here is that this allows you to apply very very specific eq to your uh, effect in order for the effect to either be more proud in your mix or to sit back inside and blend in you know depends what you want to do because if i wanted to really over accentuate this effect, I might do something weird like that. And then the effect is really uh, pumping a lot within the, the human vocal uh, frequencies here, like, you know, 4K, 5, 6, these areas, yeah. But that's not what I want. I want something like that. And I wouldn't want these curves to be too steep. So I might do like that, make it a little bit more bell-like, something like that. Um, of course, people do more I wanna know, wanna know, wanna so um, I, I was setting it, but without even listening to it, because in some cases you already know that this area here being part of like what you're doing with your, all your repetitions and stuff, which is uh, what delay is, you're kind of cluttering the frequencies in that area. You're disturbing the bass guitar, you're disturbing some of the low keys, and of course um, any other. Uh, low instrument that 
is normally using those frequencies. So you don't really need it. You're using the delay to repeat elements that are already existing, but not only that, usually on instruments that are much higher in the frequency range. In this case, the voice. One thing to be clear about, you see right now, we're still on the top send. So we are on reverb, but now if I click, since we added delay, now there's another choice. I can choose and switch where the faders reacting to. So they are, the, the, so these ones are for delay. So whatever is chosen there is the one that is applicable. It's the one that is in is in play. I'm going to start with a preset that is uh, an eight note. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want to know you. Ridiculous. So it's not what I want. I want. I'm gonna go for sixteen note. I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know your heart. I want, I want to know, to know you. you. Again, it's very ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is to make sure first that I turn down the, the main output of the delay itself so that I have some room to play with, with this fader. Yeah. I want to know, want to know, want to know your heart. I want, I want to, know to know you. Let me I wanna know, wanna know, wanna know what's inside. I want to know you. Let me in. If you see here, with this choice that I made when I chose this preset, it comes with uh, it cuts off uh, as high as 300, 340, cutting all those frequencies down. And then this side is a little bit higher. It's not like uh, filtering as much as you can see. Yeah, on the high side. If we look at the one that we are doing here, we're only cutting off up to 90, which is uh, futile since we're already doing more on the original. So if, say, I didn't have this or I don't want to use these ones and I've left them like that, and I want to use a more precise EQ whereby I have full control of the parameters, then I would um, use this side and I'll go up to 300 or something like that, that range roughly where we were before and then you can still keep this one one thing to note is that with reverb it's actually more critical but on both sides uh, even the, the the high side to not overdo things but on delay the high side sometimes can survive more and sometimes the idea with the delay is that you can hear that beginning of the repetition on some things you really want it because maybe you're using it for rhythmic patterns the way the edge does for you two, for example, uh, even though those are guitar pedals, but still delay, where you can use delay to create patterns that weren't necessarily directly played by the musician or when the music was being tracked. But now you're, you're going that extra step to add a certain musicality to a passage. If that's the reason you're using delay, then you actually need to hear the accents of the beginnings in order for those rhythms to come through. However, if it's more uh, for thickness application or to get like some element or a sense of sustain, what I would call uh, simulated sustain, where you're just making someone sound like their notes are longer because they're repetitions which are overlapping with the original voice and then the note seems to sing out longer especially with in ballads and stuff like that then you may not want the accents of the beginnings of those repetitions you may want to kind of like have this start at a lower frequency so that you don't really hear too much of those hard beginnings of everything but in this case i'm okay with it uh, being around there something like that so let's have a listen to that i want to know want to know want to know your heart I want, I want to know, to know you. you, let me in. I want to know, want to know, want to know what's inside. I want to know you, let me in. So you get the idea. You can EQ your reverbs and your delays. Of course, we'll do this um, in a more elaborate way. I'll do another video where I do something much cleaner. But here I was just introducing the concept so you, you have the notion that that is something also available to you to be able to actually balance your mix better or give it more clarity.
by making sure that, yes, you have applied the effects, but don't make them get in the way of the original sounds that were being made. Or if in the case of delay, in some cases, you may actually want the effect to, to get in the way because you're using it to create new patterns and stuff like that. So again, EQ will be your friend on such a thing. And do make sure that you try out, even though here it has been quite a ramshackle delivery, you've got the idea of it. So make sure that you try these um, uh, techniques out uh, by yourself so you can discover things that you can use them for in your own work. Okay then, take care now. Bye.